Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, uh, <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, follow along with me. I'm gonna show you how I put these vintage micarta handles on this full tang knife. Kyle gave me one of his old tools. I made it a little bit wider. It's a piece of wood. I can't remember the name of it, but we're gonna make a handle out of, out of the same wood someday. It's kind of a reddish hue. It's really tough, really tight grain. Anyway, um, it's one of his old tools. He got several of them. He gave this one to me. I made it a little bit wider for my chef's knives because Kyle had been making chef's knives. Uh, so his knives were a lot thinner, uh, but I just couldn't get in there and sand on this. I, I wrapped sandpaper around this. It's a, I got this side still wet, but I uh, sand on the, I sand on this knife in a fixture uh, with this piece of wood. Works really good. Um, so I made it wider and I put a CA finish on it just to make it a little bit tougher. And I'm getting ready to go in and uh, get uh, uh, it heads up with Kyle on how far he wants me to go with this thing right here. Um, I think I'm getting ready to hand sand it to 220. Then I'm going to etch my name in there, deep in the side. So I, I skipped it on one knife. I had to go back on a finished blade and put my name in there. So just got excited and couldn't stop going. So um, we're gonna go inside and get a heads up with Kyle on what the next process is here, make sure I get my ducks all lined up and I do the proper sequence. Because I don't like going backwards. I'll do it, but I don't like it. This is 5160. I, I forged this out to shape, really tight to shape, and uh, no Damascus. I just got done surface grinding the handle. It's just starting to blend on the blade right there. Uh, I got a really tall blade, it's sweet. This, this little rascal is uh, two and seven sixteenths right now. I've had a hard time getting that, that heel tall enough. Well, I got it tall enough this time, and uh, it's looking pretty sweet. So we're gonna put, some, I think, micarta on here, some uh, vintage micarta on this particular knife. So stick around and see what happens next. I got the surface ground. Does that look like it's where I wanna be? Is this one we wanna put micarta handles on? The vintage micarta? I don't know what, how vintage it is, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't kneel the handle. Blades kind of curvy. How do I take that out? The tank still needs to be streamlined more, right? How so? It just doesn't look good yet. It looks rough, rough thing. It's a little bit more of an angle we've been putting on them. We've only done one of these. That's, I don't know why. I've rounded the back in. end. I've rounded that back in on half my knives. You can't compare it to those straight handles, so. If look, you think it'll look cool, I'll do it. Absolutely. You can't compare it to those straight handles unless you're going to compare this as being straight. If you compare this, this angle I get it. to I know this it drops. right here, then it's more, it's almost exactly the same. I hear you. It drops in the back. We're going to put some uh, new profile lines on this handle. Then we're going to soften the tang, then we'll start hand, uh, hand sanding 220, etch my name in. We'll pick it up later. Just got done softening the tang on my new knife. Now we're gonna hand sand the blade.
getting ready to put these micarta, vintage micarta grips on this tang on this 5160. I'm getting ready to finish the front edge of the handle. I'm trying to find a nice stopping spot, the proper angle up here. I'm going to find that here right next. Then I'm going to drill two holes in here and insert stainless steel pins, 16th inch stainless steel pins, and epoxy this up. This is hardened. I soften the spine, uh, heat it up to a blue, uh, purple, and let it cool down slowly so it's softened as much as we're going to get it. It's still a high carbon. I used a carbide drill bit to drill a 16th inch hole for my 16th inch stainless steel pins. And I used very high carbon uh, 5 16 milling bit to drill through there so the epoxy can run through and get a little, rid of a little bit of weight. I am getting ready to drill the holes in my handle slabs so that I can uh, locate them and shape them so that they fit the handle. Getting ready to do that right now. All right, we got one in. It's a little snug. I'm gonna drill a little bit bigger hole. I just might run that drill bit down there through there a couple more times. That might work too. From here on, I think the micarta swelled and then came back in. I don't think it made a clean cut. I think it's a little gently gooey, so to speak. I got this where I think it needs to be. I can trim it just a little bit. I'm still a little bit fat. So I'm going to check with the master bladesmith and see if I'm heading in the right direction. It's never wrong to ask questions. The Ricasso area and the plunge grind and where the handle starts, all, where all that comes together. I'm trying to make sure I got my math and my geometry correct. This follows the grind line and I'm gently back off the grind line. I'm, I'm touching it right now, I'm right up on it. So I got to bring it gently back, flatten this radius out a little bit. I believe I'm going to check with the master bladesmith to make sure I'm heading the right direction. Come on. I think I got plenty of rays on that. I think I'll flatten it out to get it to come back a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. Because I want a good amount of radius like that. Okay. I didn't want to come. I was concerned about coming back too far here and here. Um, I followed, I paralleled the grind line where that, where this meets and that meets. Is that correct? Grind line trumps everything, doesn't it? Where what and what meets? Where this point and this point are. Need to be parallel with the grind line. Sure. Why don't you drill holes all the way through here? I don't understand. Why didn't you drill holes all the way through here? I did, I did. I just sanded over it. It was a little whoopy. The dust filled it. Oh. They were a little bit snug, so I, I didn't need to do it, so I didn't. I thought you said, why why did I drill all the way through? It's like, uh, I can fix that. All right. Yeah. You yeah. Have any other questions? No. See ya. Thanks. Oh. Thanks and kisses. So I'm heading the right direction. Um, you like that radius I got on it? I'm going to flatten this out a little bit to bring it back off of the uh, grind line. But I'm going to leave these two points alone. Then I can always round them off more later. So if I take some of this radius off, I'll look at it. If I want to put more radius on it, then I'll do it later. Just a little bit of time. One of my favorite tools out here, like Kyle said, it was a luxury item. But this variable speed. You can slow this down so it sands real slow. That way it won't get away from you. You can go real slow with it. You won't burn stuff and you can grind slowly or your, uh, your product won't eat away too fast. We're not even a sixteenth off of that, that grind line. We need to be almost almost an eighth inch back. Probably 330 seconds would be good. So I'm gonna take down a little bit more right here off this top. I got a marker on there. The marker is just a reference line. Just so you can see where you're going because if you don't have something up there, you'll just be guessing. You gotta know where you're at. I'm gonna clean 
getting some of that that little foo foo um, my cart off there. It kind of plugs up the wheel a little bit. All right, we're there. Uh, it's not quite an eighth inch. Three three seconds of an inch at the point at the peak. Still got a nice little radius, and we're still going to put a radius on it this way next. But I'm going to make my other piece on this side before I put my radius over here around this off so that these will be a matching set. If you want to err on the side of caution, make this one a little bit further out than this one. You want it to be perfectly parallel, but if you do, are going to err, err out because it makes it look fast. If you get the bottom canted out contrary to this plunge grind or this blade line or perpendicular, if you get it out front, the blade looks slow. It's just an aesthetic thing. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, function, but uh, it sure has got a lot to do with fashion. That's We're about fashion too. Uh, the aesthetics rock. The aesthetics have to be good. It has to be a, a real sexy looking knife. Can I say sexy on the, on the radio? We're looking pretty sweet. I got it tight. Um, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some more. I've only got this down to a, a 320 grit, so if I scuff it up, it's not that big a deal. It can be brought back real fast. So I did put the tape on there to keep from cutting myself wide open, but I don't mind to scratch it. It won't hurt a thing. This pin's fitting the micarta kind of snug. I like that. Gently loose on here, snug here, a little too snug to push these all the way through. And I need to put this on there in those holes and I need to slide it together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these out and put some shorter pins in there because I don't want to push those pins all the way in. They're in there kind of just gently stiff. I'm gonna leave them like that. So I'm gonna, I got some shorter pins. Then I'm gonna uh, pin those two together. I'm gonna mirror these little piglets up. And this this is like this is like bulletproof up here. Once you get those pins lined up, you just grind it down so they match. You got a matching set on both sides. It's awesome. So that's what we're gonna do next. The next day. I just got my handles glued on. I mirrored these two handle slabs, these scales. I mirrored them over there, had them pinned together and polished and buffed together. Same, they're the same on both sides, the alignment pins. Put them in the exact same spot on each side. One's not higher than the other. I just got glued up with some 30-minute uh, epoxy. And I'm gonna scrape off gently with a WD-40. Take out that little residue right across the front edge right there. That's come out over across onto the blade. Uh, Q-tips and WD-40 will take that right up. WD-40 works slower than uh, acetone, so we don't want the acetone wicking underneath it, but the WD-40 works a lot slower on the epoxy, so it'll be a lot more uh, more gently, gently removing the epoxy. The blade's sanded out to a really smooth 600 consistent uh, grooves. I'm going to have to touch it up a little bit, just drag a 600 across it, and it's looking pretty sweet. Micarta, vintage micarta slabs. So we'll see what she does. Got good height on the blade, nice length. Kind of got it going on. If you can see it through that mess. I like it. I still like it. I, I like it now. We are going to be back and finish this up in another video. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.